Chipper Chap, this is Chipper Chap Chap, episode 66. 66. 66. I am Fu Ray. I am Chamba. And we are two brown dudes here to talk to you about some nerdy shit. Nerdy Let's shit. get right into it. Yeah, I'm sorry about This um, week's episode. Yeah. Oh, well, go ahead. I was going to say, sorry that we're a bit late. And yeah, we're just late. We didn't have one last week. Thanksgiving time, man. It's crazy mm-hmm. around here. What happens? Uh, and we record usually on Thursday, which is Thanksgiving time. Yeah. So I just suggest we recorded earlier, but stuff happens still, so it's just how it is. But now we got it because you're about to leave, so here it goes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and this week we're we're foregoing movie news, right? Do we don't have anything. This um, do you know what? If there's any news that pops up this week, we could probably just push it to next week because we haven't. Review this one. This is kind of the review of a film that we had watched a couple of weeks back. That These four realize. that are in our show notes, those are from the last episode then? No, these are new. Oh, we might as well mention those. If you like. Crow Reboot? What's up? Apparently that's not... The Crow Reboot is apparently in trouble again. I, that, and, uh, studio change, right? Yeah, so apparently the studio that had the rights went under and sold the rights. And because they sold the rights to another company, they're not sure if Momoa and the director is coming with it. So that means we're back in development hell once again. Uh, So, you know, who knows? Who knows if that movie is ever going to happen? But, you know. I don't know. I don't, I don't like. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't say that I'm like super excited for a new crow movie, just because of all the shit that we've heard about it before, like Bradley Cooper and cornrows and shit like that. Uh, doesn't excite me. But Jason, Mom- I feel like Jason Momo is just gonna look like Lobo, dude. That's my thing, also, and with the whole crow reboot, um, it's not as if the original crow films shit. Mm-hmm. It's still it's still pretty solid, and with all yeah. these issues that this new one is having, it's almost like what's the point? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. But you know, somebody sees some uh, commercial value in the name. I think is really what it comes down to. I guess, I uh, guess. people still remember the name. They remember the old film. It's just it's just weird though because. It's just weird though, because they they made sequels of the previous ones, and though those weren't exactly the greatest. Right. I think what they need to do. Does Jet Li have kids? I don't think so. Jet Li. Yeah. I don't think so. Oh wait, maybe, probably. I know Jackie Chan has kids, and one of them is an actor or something. Maybe. They should get Jackie Chan's kid. Yeah. And let him be the crow. And if they wait like another year, or they don't even have to wait another year, they technically do it now. Get the chick that plays the Yellow Ranger in the new movie to be the hinge woman in the new crow reboot and really like bring it for a full circle. Why Jet Li? Because, uh, well, because Jet Li, Bruce Lee, they're both like. Jet Li used to re- remade one of Bruce Lee's movies. I guess, but he's got daughters. The giant fist of legend or whatever. You have a girl crow. They could, actually. Why don't they do that instead? Or do Chan. Jackie Chan was around from the same time. He was in Bruce Lee movie getting fucked up. That's, that's true. I think his son is probably too old. I don't remember how old his kid is now. He's an adult male. If we can't get Asians and Ghost in the Shell, I don't know how we're going to get an Asian lead crow. That's very true. But then again, Momoa's basically Polynesian. Polynesian? 
It's uh, anyway, next thing up, Mortal Kombat Ryu gets a director, Simon McQuay, McQuid, McQuid, uh, I, from what I understand, he just he does like PlayStation commercials and shit. Yeah, I, I just checked uh, up his IMDb. He's got nothing. Yeah, he's he's a commercial guy, but apparently his commercials are really big. He did a, a few PlayStation commercials or something, uh, and he does a lot of video game commercials from what I what I gather. Okay. So. Okay. Cool. Question mark happens in. At this point, because I know nothing of his work, or I don't even know what commercials he's directed, I don't exactly know what I'm to expect from this. All right. Um, I mean, you could always Google Simon Quinn commercials. I'm sure something will pop up. But either way, I I like that they hired someone. <laughs> it's right. hard to get excited point though i feel like but you know if they're gonna make it i just want to know if if they're gonna make it like true to what the game is now or Mm -hmm. if they're going to try and make the like hyper realized kind of (sighs) reboot like they did with the with that like mortal Kombat short film thing with the the reptile has harlequin disorder or whatever yeah dude that was so cool one and Johnny Cage was the former Power Ranger. <laughs> like that's fine, canon. Too, I guess. That's fine. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. I saw something online with somebody saying that uh, they wanted Kellen Lutz to play Johnny Cage. Sure, he looks like a cocky prick. <laughs> he does, which like, which I'm like, yeah, I kind of get it. But at the same time, Johnny Cage is my favorite, so I'm like, fuck that guy. <laughs> he can't be Johnny Cage. Yeah, you kind of, yeah, for you, for your sake, I suppose not. Get, but, like, Scott Atkins. <laughs> He's, yeah, actually, yeah. He can play a martial artist a in, yeah, in like, movies. Just, you're going to pop a mask on him anyways. Why? As in because he's, uh, oh, wait, Johnny Cage, you say? Oh, I thought you said uh, Sub-Zero. No, Johnny Cage is the—he's the former actor. He just wears sunglasses. Yeah, I know. I remember. I forgot. For some reason, <laughs> uh, for some reason, I heard I had Sub Zero. <laughs> you knew who I was talking about when I brought up Kellen Lutz. You said he looked like a cocky prick. Uh, anyway, next up, John Wick director is now helming Deadpool two. That's good news, right? I think so. I for, mean, for the action, it's good news. Absolutely. Um. John Wick didn't exactly have a lot of the humor, but it's not like, you know, it's it's not as if that director can't pull that off. I'm not so much worried about the humor because a lot of that is on the writing. Yes, that's true. But the visual shit is what I'm concerned about because this, like, uh, Tim Miller, he has his own effects studio. He knows what he's asking for and getting in the language of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, he can get us a super cheap Colossus that looks amazing. Right. I don't know if John Wick guy can do the same thing. Right. So I wonder if it will suffer in that way, like not just with CGI characters, but the weirder stuff. Like, it, are they going to do things where he like pulls shit from off screen? Because they didn't have a lot of that kind of fourth wall breaking in no. the first move, with the exception of like he sees some cartoon characters at the end of the movie, but even those, he didn't pull those into reality. They just, they were, it was something he saw in his head. It's almost like they so, could probably do something, regard, like if they if it was a 3D film, right, right. they could probably try some <laughs> effects via the 3D. I don't know exactly how it'll play when you're at home, or if it's not right, in 3D, right, right. but it could still be funny in that sense, you know? It could be, yeah. Well, like, like an old school wins, like yeah. a fake silhouette gets up well, and walks like, in front for example, of the street. Like, down in front. <laughs> could, yeah, could you imagine if, say, um, he just randomly, say, jumps and then he'll. Mm. And then the scene, the background will kind of shift to a different location. He'll basically just land into it as if he's teleported, but he's essentially jumping through panels or jumping through scenes. Right. Or have him, have him jump out of the letterbox and run across the bottom of the letterbox right. like he's on in the theater. <laughs> I wonder, if, yeah, I wonder if they plan on doing anything like that. But it could be interesting, I feel. 
I would love to see them try and do stuff like that, but there was none of it in the first one, so I don't know. I don't know how serious they're trying to keep the universe, like keep the universe grounded. And Deadpool's just crazy, right? Right. Uh, whereas in the comics, like he has the ability to manifest these weird things. Like <laughs> it's, it's bizarre. True. So uh, next up, yeah, Angela Bassett and Forrest Whitaker join Black Panther cast. Uh, Angela Bassett, she's she's a lady. She is a lady that I've not seen in a film for a long time. I think back in the day, she should have been Storm, but then they waited too long, and now she'd be Grandma Storm. Yep. Wish uh, Force Whitaker. I, just, I don't know what the fuck they're having Force Whitaker do. I just, uh... What, I guess, you know, fight? Disney's on him. Yeah, I don't know who he would be. Yeah, well, I mean, he's on the Star Wars... So that's already a good thing for the Disney's. That's what I'm saying. He's already got a relationship with yeah. them. But, but uh... my guess is that he is playing. Uh, what's his nuts? Michael Jordan's dad. Mm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe. Because I I think he is supposed Michael Jordan's supposed to be like the. A badass like Black Panther type of figure for another tribe or something. But like, is it so? He's essentially just Black Panther, but some from not Wakanda. Right, basically. Does he have like the suit and stuff too? And technology? no, I, well, I mean, I don't know what he's gonna look like in the movie, but in the comics, he doesn't. Mm, okay. Hmm. I wonder. You know, who knows? That's what they're gonna do in the movie. I'm very curious about that though. They they basically any any black dude you can think of, Is they put him film? in this movie. I know, other right? than like Denzel Washington or some shit. So I'm surprised they did it. He probably just wouldn't have done it. He's like, no, nah, I'm I make my own franchises. I don't want to be in a Marvel. No, I could do this myself. I could be an action hero. He'll get there eventually. <laughs> it's like here's they gotta have a villain for Black Panther two. That's true. I'm sure they'll give them. Could you imagine? Uh, but that? anyway, Dang. let's get into this uh, review mm-hmm. portion now because we we've not talked about Doctor Strange yet. So, but I nope. feel like because we waited, more mm-hmm. people have seen it and yep. can now listen to this more freely. Yes. Now it, there's actual space for them to be like, oh, they haven't spoiled anything for us because we'd already seen it. All right. So. Let us commune about Doctor Strange. Uh, we, you and I haven't even really talked about it a lot yet. No, we haven't at all, because we were pretty much saving it until this recording. Right. Uh, so, how fresh are you on all the plot and everything? Uh, well, it's been about a month. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So we kind of held off came a out bit. The beginning. Oh, you got it. You got it earlier as well. Yeah, we you? got a week earlier. Yeah. Um, it's still pretty fresh because it's still it's definitely one of the most visually fantastical of the Marvel slash comic book films in general. So quickly, I guess. Okay. You come out of the film positively, extremely, or negatively. You're very positive on Very positive. Very positive. Speaking of that, apparently it just broke uh, Iron Man's record nice, for cool. highest grossing uh, Marvel film for a solo outing. Nice, nice. Good on him. Yeah. So that's cool. I'm that's glad people cool. checked it out. They weirded out by it or whatever. That's I'm very sure cool. Schnapp be bragging about it. Um,. I think uh, I think that's cool, man. I'm glad people checked it out. I also came out of it pretty positively. I did hear some negative feedback from people. Okay. Do you want to speak of the uh, negative feedback? As an Asian, yeah, as an Asian person, mm-hmm. Jeffrey. Yes. Were you going into the movie upset at all by the casting of Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One? Not at all. Okay. Yeah, I. I liked Tilda Swinton quite a bit, so uh, I, liked, I was excited. Yeah, 
I liked it before the film, and after seeing the film, I'm like, yeah, I can't imagine anybody else. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Some people suggested like a Michelle Yeoh casting. Sure. And I, I think she's great. I like Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, she's great. But I don't know if she would have conveyed the same charm that Tilda Swinton did. She had like a almost pixie like charm to her. Yes. Yes. Ex- where very it's very pixie-like. it's very innocent and fun, despite the fact that she's also very regal, and you can tell she's like a which wise is, figure. Which here. is such a balance. Yeah. Like the balance that she maintained through that through her acting was phenomenal. Yeah, I think she did a great job. So I, I was pretty happy with that, regardless of the negative feedback. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Uh, what did uh, you think of Cumberbatch? He was great, dude. As strength. Yeah, I liked him. I thought he, I thought he did a good job. Yeah, wasn't was... nearly as bothered by the accent as I thought it might be. No, um, but it's like at at first you're like, hey, that's not his regular. But then, as right. you're watching, like within the first five minutes, you're not like, hey, that's weird sounding. You're more like, oh, it's Doctor <laughs> Strange. It's right. Stephen Strange. Yeah. You know? And um, he was fantastic. Uh, I think all, I think throughout the film, every character pretty much did their jobs. Uh, mind you, some of their roles weren't exactly super fleshed out or presented as balanced as the rest, but everyone kind of did their roles to, you know, to the best that they can, to, to the best of what they were given. Well, that said, yes. one of the complaints I heard was... We're talking full spoilers, by the way, yes, people. Yes, we're, we're spoiling, spoiling, spoilings. Um, so one of the things I complaints I heard was about Christine Palmer's character. Their that's, version that's, of what the that's what I was getting to. That's what I was getting to. Right. Some people think she was underdeveloped or only used yes. for the purpose of, like propelling strange or telling strange that she knows that he's a good person down deep or whatever. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I wasn't, I, I don't think that I was bothered by that, but I, I see what people are talking about, but I don't, I just don't think that it took me out of it in any way. I don't think I would have focused on it without someone aiming me in that direction. Um, she just seemed fine to me. She's the person that he knew beforehand she she's the like one person that knew him beforehand basically <laughs> and didn't hate him pretty much yeah yeah like she she knew who uh, he was like deep down not just uh right. you know the arrogant doctor well she knew of him as that but she knew that he was more than that right she she liked him anyway i think she liked him in despite that Instead of right, I don't even know if it was like, oh, I know, I know somewhere in you you're good. I don't even know <laughs> if it was that. It just seemed like, yeah, he's got some douchey qualities, but he is, he's a very talented guy. Mm-hmm. He's charming or whatever. He's smart. He I, seems like an okay guy. He's got a couple flaws for sure. Which is great because that just shows that he's a human. <laughs> right. You know, like he's not. Perfect. It seemed more natural to me. Absolutely. Like he felt like. Uh, a lot of the characters here, I felt, they weren't exactly just, um, they weren't just, uh, bad for the sake of being bad. They had reasons for their actions. Like, even speaking of, like, Caecilius and stuff. Right. He's not exactly, he's not bad, he's just, he's following what he believes is the true calling. Right, he misguided. Exactly, and um, but that that goes the same with the other characters here. They're kind of just um, they're not, they they are flawed, but they they felt very real still, you know. Even like especially considering the world that they presented in the film with the whole, you know, multi dimensions and stuff like that. That's very. So, do you think that Caecilius breaks the chain of? bad underdeveloped marvel villains personally i i don't think he broke it because i didn't really see that like sure there's a lot like a lot of the the marvel films they didn't exactly have they've never had super super strong villains like right right but i i never would have said like they were too underdeveloped or they were just too shallow or 
pointless and stuff. Because like, if you really like think about and talk about some of the previous villains, it's not like they didn't have reasons for their actions. Maybe it wasn't presented yeah. fully as much as, say, with Caecilius, because I felt with Caecilius they might have showed more of it. Like they allowed... Yeah, I think yeah. the only one that really bothered me, I think, is the Dark Elf dude. Yeah, and the thing is, if you think if you watch that film again, you can understand his actions, but I don't think they showed enough of it. I don't think that they justified to me why he would want to go back to nothingness. Like, it's, it's better right, to right. go back to no- yeah, yeah. nothingness then, than just to... Mm-hmm exist as a super powerful elf warrior on Which whatever is what planet he was, of, right yeah yeah I don't, yeah like, so i don't i don't yeah. get that part of it he was but which is a shame because i felt that they probably could have done something to turn the character around because it's not like as in turn the character into something that's more weighty than what we, we were presented with right uh which kind of sucks because it's like you got an actor like that yeah and you don't really utilize what he's capable of presenting but yeah, yeah, that's another film. But this film, Caecilius was great. Yeah, Caecilius, at least at least when he was leading us towards doom, yes, he was doing it under the guise that he thought he was bringing us all to this the connected, truth. unified yeah. reality. Exactly. And that like... would be a good thing in his mind, whereas, mm-hmm. you know, even Doctor Strange points out, really think you're working with the good guy when your face looks like that <laughs> yeah like he brought like several points to it but he's his actions were justified by his beliefs and what his beliefs were were to be the truth to him so right that was his reasonings for his actions so you um, can completely agree with what and plus because like you know how they explained in the film how a lot of the people that uh wanted to learn under the you know, uh, under Tilda Swinton's character, they it's they they all had flaws. They all had things they wanted to correct in their lives and stuff, right? They were like seeking guidance and stuff. So you right. knew that each of them had a past. Mm-hmm. So that's and and in his and in his case, Cassilius's case, he went there. He tried to discover how to fix himself or heal himself in a way, and this was kind of the direction that it was pushed towards, which obviously wasn't you know the best. <laughs> Very true. Uh, on the on the subject of that, though, what did you think of our Mordo character? Mordo was great, all I, dude. All I really know about him, he wears green. He's the bad guy for Doctor Strange. Don't yes. really know too much else about that guy. Mm-hmm. But from this movie, what I gather is he's Doctor Strange's Sinestro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm I'm really cool with that because the uh, again, like I I want to bring it up again. I think all the actors were fantastic for, and they did mm-hmm. a, a great job with what they were given. Yeah. Unfortunately, for like say, Christine Palmer, we didn't get a lot of her, Mm-mm. but what she did for the role still really worked out. It's not like she didn't act it out; like she didn't. No one half-assed anything. What would you have thought? Yes. If instead of Christine Palmer, mm-hmm. they had Rosario Dawson's character. Like, she wasn't a love interest. She was just a girl who knew him before he got fucked up. Cool. And why cool? Because that links the Netflix automatically without even doing anything. Right. Now, in the comics, apparently, there are three night nurses who worked as a team. Yes. And Christine Palmer and uh, Claire Temple are both members of that team. Yep. But... I feel like they didn't give us enough time to give any shits about Christine right. Palmer. Right, right. And that's but, the you know, thing. who knows what their plans are for her. Maybe Absolutely. she'll stick around in a bigger capacity. But honestly, so far, all the can. other girlfriends got the axe. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel that she can actually have a have an actual substantial role in the next one. Right. But um, they had to do a lot with this film because it's another origin story. And oh man, it, oh, this movie definitely made me excited for Thor. I say that much. I was oh, already excited. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it made me excited for that. Since we're talking spoilers, yes. Uh, what are your th- what were your thoughts on Dormammu? I thought he was the inter- I... interpretation of Dormammu that we got this time around. The inter- the interpretation of Dormammu that we got was 
Oh, put it this way. I didn't, ex- I, I, I didn't really expect him to be in the film. Right. Like, I don't know. I might be naive in, in saying that, but in my head, it was, it was more so, I thought that they would have made mention of him, but I didn't, yeah. I didn't imagine that we would actually see him. Yeah. Okay. So here's my ish. Okay. I went and saw that 15 minute preview thing. Yes. Oh, that's right. You did. I was telling you about this weird giant flaming head thing uh-huh. that I that I saw him battling, and I was like, maybe that's supposed to be Dormammu, but it was so bizarre looking to me, and nothing like what Dormammu looks like in the books, that I didn't know if that was him or not, because it just cut to it randomly of him fighting this head thing in the in a standing on a meteorite or whatever. I'm like. I have no fun. And they didn't say it. They never said any names. They're just like, here's another clip of him fighting a big weird monster thing in oh, the so sky. Oh, you had seen him in the preview already? Yeah, that's why I was like, I don't know why they showed that shit to me unless it was specifically for us to tar- start talking about it to people like, hey, maybe your mom was in this shit. So to try and get other people more interested in the movie before it came out. But otherwise, it just seems like a real weird decision to be like, oh, and here's the big bad villain. No. For a second? I didn't realize that they had shown that. So, yeah, that that kind of sucks in a sense. It only not- sucks because I didn't – because there was no explanation, I couldn't get excited for it. I was just like, giant weird purple head. That's you, so, cool. so you knew it was Dormammu, though? I assumed, but they ne- you didn't hear him speak or anything. So I didn't know what the fuck it was. So I was just like – at some point in this movie, he goes from fighting in the street with all the buildings going crazy to now he's standing on a meteorite with a giant purple head, and I had no idea what it was. I was just like, that was random. I really wanted to ask you about it, but you hadn't seen it yet. And then after you saw it, I was like, I mentioned it. I was like, I saw this giant purple head thing, but I don't know who that was. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was just a super bizarre. It was a bizarre inclusion to me. And also, I remember before the before I went and saw it, we talked. We were talking a little bit. I was asking you questions just based on the 15 minutes that I saw. And I was saying that that scene where Doctor Strange is driving and they're telling him about the cases he can take. Yep. And they mention the guy who was uh, f- who f- fractured his spine or severed his spine or something in an experimental armor. Mm-hmm. I was like, was that supposed to be Rhodey? Because then okay. what timeline is this? I was going to say, this is my one, this is one of my pro- my primary issues with this film. Okay. It's not exactly, it's not a super negative on a film, but right. I think they needed to be more clear with the timeline. Yeah, they're not clear with time. Even just Doctor Strange training, you have no idea yes. how long he's like, been there. Exactly. It, I know it sucks to say, to show that uh, if they did the whole a date like two years later or some shit like that. We got nothing. So I don't exactly know when this lands, which kind of sucks because you know how most of the the Marvel films are, they're supposed to be in sequential time in terms of releases, right? Right, right. This one, it's kind of, it it is and it isn't. It starts off with that it's not, and then it basically leads up to the point where it is. So they caught us up, basically. What I had heard was... That, that that reference of the guy, the military guy in the armor mm-hmm. with the signs, spine severed yeah, yeah. was apparently a reference to Iron Man 2 because yeah, yeah. you see exactly. footage of the hammer tech suits exactly. fucking up people. Mm-hmm. But because, that, because they don't even say experimental hammer tech suit for you to be like, okay, cool, mm-hmm. now I'm fine and I understand what timeline this is. They, just, they don't say. Yeah, it was too yeah. ambiguous. And because, like, and, and I understand, like, like, they were trying to be maybe ambiguous because it's like, oh, here's an Easter egg, but you're not specific with it, so it makes it a little more confusing for those who are actually watching all of them and trying to pay attention to it. Right, and then they showed the Avengers Tower apparently twice in the ta- in the uh, in the skyline, so it's not clear because they show it before his car accident, which implies that it happens after Avengers, even though they're they're asking him to fix a guy that got messed up in Iron Man 2, which is still fine because that's that movie takes place right before Avengers. Right, right. But 
uh, it definitely implies that it ha- the the beginning of the movie at least is happening a lot closer to this alien invasion, and no one mentions it. Mm. Like Doctor Strange is still like, oh, this magic shit that could be weird, even though now at this point in the universe they've all seen aliens invade. Right. <laughs> so like, why be as skeptical? Yeah, yeah, it's almost like, but, but. <sighs> See the whole skepticism regarding aliens. Okay, aliens is kind. Of, it, it is definitely out of out of world, so it's right. something that we're not familiar with. What what they've shown us in this film, I feel that it's a slightly. It might be. A, it's a different kind of outer world. It's so, other dimensions, Chad. Yeah, which yeah. this movie brings us the the concept of the multiverse, which is amazing to me. It is amazing, but I'm like real skeptical right now about how they're going to use that. Right, right. Or if they'll use it. Oh, they're not going to mention it and not use it. But that's my thing. It's almost like if they're going to use it, how will they use it? Will they Uh, use it to its complete potential? I presume we will know when Infinity War Part 2 comes out. (laughs) We will know how they use it. Goodness, Um, goodness. Yeah, just see, it's it's very interesting to me. I wonder, I wonder how what Doctor Strange's role is going to be because at the end of the movie, they show him in the scene with Thor or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like Thor comes to visit him, and he's like, "I need to find Odin. Mm-hmm. I brought my brother here, mm-hmm. so he knows that Loki was pretending to be Odin." Yep. I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't know how exactly that and works. And to me, right. Like this, this post-credit scene might uh, be one of the most crucial post-credit scenes. Oh yeah, I think it's a scene out of Thor, just like they did with the oh, yeah, uh, true. the the Winter so- or the Civil War scene that right, they right, put actually, in Ant Man. Yeah. That's true. I that's think true. it's I think it's a scene out of it because he shows up to talk to Doctor Strange, and suddenly he's got the yellow gloves and shit. Mm-hmm. They never showed any of that during the movie, right. so I think so it's, it's like yeah, time okay, that makes a lot more sense. It's almost like. That the first post credit scene, they showed us a preview, a sneak right. peek into the next film, whereas the second post credit scene shows us essentially the follow Where Doctor up. Doctor Strange's yes. universe is. Yes, yes. Oh, right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. But that's fucking Although, rad. Even though it's technically it's not the next film, because the next one is Guardians, I thought. Right, so it's even further down, titties. Yeah, I'm yeah, so excited. They're, show, they're showing us preview for something that doesn't come out till next <sighs> Rice, November. Rice, like, Rice, Rice, Rice. Marvel, Marvel, Marvel. <laughs> yeah, Spoiled. I'm excited for it though, man. Spoiled. Uh, but uh, Doctor uh, Strange, this like, I know everyone's like, oh, they basically did Inception with the visuals and amped it up. And I'm like, they went so far beyond what Inception did. They did. Like but, Inception showed uh, us the the, the the turning, the uh the, the curling, you know, surface of the city. Right. This one was like, uh, let's kaleidoscope the entire thing. It just makes me glad that they went the route they did with Dormammu instead, because they would have gotten even more comparisons to Inception with the original plan, which was to have Nightmare be the villain. So the other dimension that they were supposed to fight in instead of the dark dimension was supposed to be the nightmare dimension. So it will just be like a fucked up Freddy Krueger dream world. This the, the direction that they took much better. Yeah, much better. But I imagine there would have been more weird shit like the his his first thumb on the forehead jot around the the universe, yeah. the multiverse. And yeah. they've got all the hands crawling all over him and Dude, all that weird shit. Some of those I scenes... imagine there was going to be more of that if he went to the Nightmare universe. Right. Right. I'm glad that they showed us that, though, because it means it's something that exists. Right. And also, those scenes were phenomenal. Yeah, that that sequence of when he goes back, that was what they showed us when oh, we went goodness. to the prison. Phenomenal. And... And so I was like, I was almost mad about that too, because that shit was so bananas that I was like, I kind of wish I had seen it. Because because I was expecting after watching that, that there was going to be way more of Mm. that kind of mind trip. Whereas like, that's kind of the only one where you're going through multiple dimensions or whatever, all in one sequence. I mean, even the fight scenes, they do a lot of teleporting, but they're like two other earthly-looking locations, usually. Right, right. Uh, just, 
this film was it made me happy it was pretty bananas man i was pretty i was pretty happy with it the, i thought all the action stuff was cool i know some people were disappointed that he doesn't say the spells out loud anymore it's cheesy. he just does like hand gestures and I, I think, think it, it is to. cheesy, but I think they could have done it at the same time. Like, if the whole movie is the same, right, but right. he sometimes says spells out loud yeah, yeah, while he's doing say, the fucking Naruto say, I think, hand signs. I think some fine. spells would have, re- like, yeah. it would have made more sense if it required. Right, like, depending on the magic. Right. And honestly, maybe to be honest, to say, they still could. thinking about it a bit more, you might not, it might not be even cheesy because fucking Harry Potter does that shit. That's what I'm saying. People understand that. And this was like Harry Potter for fucking martial arts it's, fans. It's, it's Yeah, dude, this is... It was legit. And uh, one of my favorite little cameo slash Easter eggs is they have Nico Monroe's... Minoru's mom... Mm-hmm. Yep. ...is part of Doctor Strange's clique. Yep, which was... And legit. they show her, like... Weapon? pull up the yeah the staff of one Mm -hmm. i don't even know if that clip was in the movie it wasn't i don't remember seeing it in the movie it wasn't i don't even it was i don't even remember seeing it in the movie i think and i saw it twice i don't remember seeing it yeah it Um, wasn't the movie um, but in a bunch of the easter egg shit i watched afterwards they kept showing her like close up with the staff and i'm like she looks really young to have a teenage daughter but i guess if the movie is supposed to be a couple years old timeline wise she could have been like ten or something, and then that's not as weird. Exactly. Uh, Who knows? But I'm very, I'm very excited to see how that's going to tie in because that's automatically a tie into a TV series if that Runaway series happens. Right, if it happens. Unless they just go, ah, fuck it, a different yeah. lady is the mom now. <laughs> well, because like, and at this point, they can pretty much change. Whatever they want, really. It's it's hard. I, it's hard to. And I feel like they'd have to because her mom is a villain in the in the comic. Yeah. That's the whole point of Runaways is all their parents are bad guys, and that's why Unless, they run away. Unless, of course, it's just her. She's actually in the Runaways. The the mom? <laughs> That'd be bizarre. That would be bizarre mm. and hilarious. Uh, but yeah, man, I, their version of giving us magic, if that's what they want to say is magic now, like officially this is magic, not like Thor's magic. I'm fine with that. I'm way uh, cool I think that. we all fucking knew ahead of time that the eye of Agamotto was going to be an infinity stone. It was, I didn't but know I... they legitimately call it an infinity stone. Right. Uh, so like, but these are pretty knowledgeable monks. That's exactly what I'm thinking. I was like, these guys, they knew a lot of shit already. Yeah, they can see all over the multiverse, so they should know all this. But that's bonkers, so they should know of Thanos. I guess they probably should. Uh, At least to some degree they should know of him. Yeah, to a degree, to a degree. But there was so much cool, just a lot of cool shit in this film, man. I was sad to see Tilda go. I was very sad. Because I was just kind of hoping we'd get more of her in future movies because of her attitude. But she could goodness. just be chill. like she can't fight anymore. Get her fucked up or something. Yeah, yeah, and I was gonna say. She's like, now I'm just I'm here. Yeah, she's a splinter now. Yeah. But but you know they they have to they have to get him from from doctor to to student to sorcerer supreme. I am glad he didn't become the sorcerer supreme in the end though. Like he's right, just that would have been real quick. Yeah, he's not there yet. He's definitely past student though. Right, which is the yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's considered a master now. Yeah. But I just I am curious about that because they do like he he asked her like how do I learn this shit and she's like how did you learn to be a doctor and he's like mm-hmm. I studied and practiced every day for years and she's like there you go. So has it been years now? Well, here's my thing. The reason I I had a I had a conversation with somebody who. They'd spoken to somebody and they were like, they had issues with that, how we learnt so fast and stuff. And I'm like, don't you guys remember those scenes where his physical body sleeping, but his astral self is constantly, constantly right. He's learning? He's up studying still. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Iron Man 2 came out in 2010. So if, if, it, if it starts when Iron Man 2 comes out yeah. and then is in the present by the end of it, then it's been six years of him exactly. studying. Not just that, not just or that. Four years but, or however many right. times. Um, but studying, but studying normally, like a normal person, but also doing extra study while a normal person would sleep, that would obviously advance it even quicker. 
Right. And he's already explained several times in the movie that he has like photographic memory exactly. and, uh, and has all this ability to pick up mm-hmm. stuff really quickly, which they all are like, how did you know all these spells and shit? No one even taught you this. It was like, and yeah, I looked like, at it once I, I and pick it's it up. there. Yeah, I looked, yeah, at, I looked at it once and I was like, okay, cool. And that all those things add together to a point where I'm like, it makes sense how far he's come. Right, it works just, for me. I just feel that they didn't show the time lapsing too well. Right, I think they could have done it in a clearer way. Absolutely. Like, say, 2010 yes. at the beginning exactly. or some and shit. Honestly, I have... To be honest, if they if they started the film and had the date at the start, I have no issues with that because at least because I know some people would look at it and go, "Oh, they're spoon feeding us." It's like, well, they're reminding us, they're letting yeah. us know. I think some people about... have issue with it because it locks the film in time. If but they say should, it starts to. in 2010, they do, but at the same time, you know, it's going to be harder to do that when you. When you start making like Spider Man Homecoming and then you start to make the sequel and the sequel doesn't come out till three years later, but he's only advanced a year in high school. See, those like, films are tricky, man. It's almost like they need to bloody do it yearly. Like as soon as the uh the next as soon as the first one's released, they're already filming the second one. Right. They've got to film them back to back. They have whatever. to because they they can't do this like Harry Potter films. Those which those were almost once a year, weren't they? Uh, the first few kind of like, they yeah, it was like every second year. That's why they grew up too fast. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, either way, I'm down for it. I'm I'm excited to see I what too, role he's gonna play with the Avengers. I want to see Doctor Strange have a conversation with Tony Stark. Oh, that's so good. Uh, I just look very much forward to seeing how he fits in the universe because my my familiarity with Doctor Strange in the Marvel Universe before was mostly through like the cartoons and a couple of the games and uh, and I read the New Avengers run where he, they used his Sanctum Sanctorum as the like Avengers Tower where they would all meet up the Secret Avengers mm-hmm. so it was cool to see his place work as a hub for them but then I'm like trying to imagine our current Avengers walking around the Sanctum Sanctorum and that's their new space instead of Stark Tower or whatever. And that's very interesting to me. Like, I want to see that dynamic, but I'm also like, that's automatically way weird now if they just switch over like, oh, okay, well, fuck Tony. Now we're all hanging out with Cumberbatch. Right. But it's almost as if... I know people have already made comparisons regarding... Gummabatch's uh, Strange and um, Danny Jr.'s Tony Stark in terms of both characteristics and, you know, right. how they portray. They're arrogant dickheads. Right, right, right. And it's almost like he's well, he will be kind of the new Stark, the new centerpiece right. for the next phase, in a sense, the next batch of Avengers. I just saw, uh, man, I really want to know where they go from here. I mean, unrelated if, to this film. We've seen what he can do. He can literally turn back time. Yes. And they're telling us still that Captain Marvel is going to be the most powerful Avenger that they've shown so far. That's what I was going to say. Just unrelated to Strange, but yeah, uh, Captain Marvel. Now, in terms of power, I, don't th- I think it's a different kind of power that they're referring to. Like just physical strength? Because I feel like that, they just would say strongest. Because, well, with power, I'm assuming it's kind of everything summed up, you know? Right. Not just, like, uh, it's not. It's more like the average in terms of powerful rather than... I don't even know what all she does, to be honest. I know she can hit real hard and she can fly. I, I don't do you, know if she has laser village, change, vision or think, hand blasts or anything. Do you of think that. they're changing what she's capable of doing? I don't know. I think they're probably just picking and choosing what shit she's ever done and making that her character. Um, Because if they're basing it off the newer version where she's she's got, you know, the uniform looking suit instead of the unitard. uh, Then I think that, you know, it's probably they're probably going to go for something that's 
I guess almost like a Green Lantern Corps because she's basically like a Nova, but she's like the the most gangsterist one. <laughs> but uh, see, that, that's my kind of thing now. Like, if she's essentially like uh, a, a super powerful version of say Nova, do we even need the actual Nova character at this point? Well, James Gunn keeps saying we're not going to get Nova. We got the Nova Corps is like a military officer thing. So, Captain Marvel can essentially be the super elite um, Nova member. I, well, I don't know. If she's. I don't think she's part of it. Right, right. right. I know she's not, but, but I'm just like she could essentially be kind of that. Yeah, I guess so. She would take the place of that. Which you know, I guess I'm fine with. I really want to see what they're gonna try and make her look like. If they're gonna do like the helmet with the mohawk hair coming out of the top of it. Right. I'm curious whether or not she's going to have multiple, um, ap- like, you know, interpretations of her appearance. Probably. I can't imagine them doing a reference to the Unitard suit. I can't no. imagine them doing it. That would be amazing. Because I, I, right now I'm looking at her uh, abilities. And uh-huh. if you said, like, if Kevin Feige stated that she's going to be the most powerful in the entire Marvel universe that we've seen so far. All right. Of the right. Avengers, not of, of the all Avengers. the characters. Okay, right, right, Avengers. right. Of the Avengers, and her ability is only stated here. It's like superhuman strength, speed, stamina, and durability. So that's essentially like Hulk. She's Hulk, like Hulk in that sense, right. except speed, because Hulk is not exactly that fast. He's pretty uh, fast though. Remember the scenes where he's like outrunning all the military vehicles right. and shit. But he's he's not Quicksilver fast. Oh yeah, not like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, energy projection and absorption. Okay, we haven't so seen that she yet. can she can get hit by blast, absorb it, and blast it back. She's like yeah, a little we bit. We haven't seen. Yeah, she's kind of bishop. A little bit bishop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But we haven't seen that really in an ability yet. No, not in Marvel. So that's probably one of the aspects that could you know elevate her power. You know, it's true. Yeah. And um, flight, obviously. And I wonder if they're gonna if when they say she's got enhanced strength and all that, if they're gonna make it like Superman level, but she's a chick. That would be like if she's basically a female Superman. Like, like I know people like, oh, DC's doing it first because Wonder Woman's coming out first. Where it's like, yeah, well, this one, uh, Captain Marvel, is essentially a female Superman. Right. So, yeah, that's cool, right? I'm very curious, man. I'm very curious if like, she's going to end up being like a tank for them. And it, it, replacing Hulk and um. To to me, it's almost like she kind of has to be. I understand why they're making her legit because her name is Captain Marvel. Right. The studio is called Marvel Studios. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. like she's uh-huh. essentially gonna be the new mascot. Or, yeah, it's the tent pole. It definitely kind of. seems that way. And I'm okay with that. Uh. As a, in terms of like, sure, let's do it. I, I'm curious how they're going to present it to us, though. Yeah, I definitely am that. I'm as excited. Well. I'm excited. I, I'm you serious. know, back to Doctor Strange though. Yes. Him, him having that the time gym and how it was used that was mm-hmm. kick ass. That last sequence, dude, when they're like dodging everything, moving in reverse. To me, that was so freaking rad. Yeah. So rad. Uh, uh, it just makes me wonder if you have that ability yep. when you've got the Eye of Agamotto. Yep. Thanos has to get that to get the Infinity Gauntlet. Yep. If your villain can do that shit, how do you win? <laughs> that is my question. Um, I feel that... Alright, speaking of the whole Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet... He is, uh-huh. he essentially he is, he has to eventually get it all right. Mm-hmm. So they're fucked. Everyone's fucked. <laughs> 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 if he, if each bloody infinity gem is that powerful already, right? And then it's like he's gonna have five of them. <laughs> Is and the, having them all in the gauntlet is supposed to make him be able to use them at will. That's crazy. Like, what's... <sighs> My question is primarily, how are they going to resolve all this? 
Guess we gotta pay for tickets to find out. I get that, but I really, I'm just hoping it's gonna be a satisfactory story. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is kind of a danger. It's very dangerous. But I'm like, I'm like, the, what scares me? The only thing that scares me about it is that they decided to make it one movie instead of two. Because I'm like, all right, they think they can wrap this all up in two and a half hours or whatever. <sighs> How much are they gonna be able to do with Thanos? Like whatever whatever movie is right before this next Avengers movie has to have something crazy happen at the end of it so that it leads right into Infinity War. Is it Black because Cat? Because by is the it, time we get into that movie, it's got to go. What? Is it Black Cat? Uh, Black Panther, my bad. Black Panther or is it um, uh, Captain Marvel that leads up to Infinity War? I think Captain Marvel is the first movie after. Oh. So then it's Black Panther that leads up to it then. I think so. That seems fucking nuts, dude. Yeah, because I, I can't imagine Black Panther's going to have anything to do with fucking Infinity. Yeah, God, that's why. I, 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 I understand that like it's all technology and stuff, but come on, man. Time Gem alone can fucking change so much shit. And they have so much they have to set up world-wise for Black Panther for... For us to get invested right. in that before, so it's not before just they like can a even jump up. back right. into space, yeah. Uh, but whatever the whatever the post credit is for Black Panther is gonna be bananas. It just shows all the Avengers dead, and Thanos is just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've, they've already kind of done that. Uh, they have, but this one is like real. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and the whole he's infinity. using their heads as puppets, dude. Him and Darkseid are puppeting to each other. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm man. pretty excited, man. I'm excited, I'm excited as heck, but I'm more. I am definitely worried. <laughs> I am, but at the same time, I keep trying to tell myself. It'll right now, the worry is not justified because everything they've given us right. has been good. I completely agree with you there. It's not. It's. It's I not can... all been amazing, but it's all been good. None of it has been inherently bad that I can remember anyway. Even Iron Man 2, which is probably like my my least favorite of the bunch. Well, well, I don't know. I actually think Iron Man 3 is probably my least favorite of the Iron Man movies, but either way, out of either of those two, they're not neither of those movies were bad. They just weren't amaze balls. Oh my god, the best thing I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they still I still pick any of those movies over Suicide Squad or any of those movies over BBS. Yeah, it's it's crazy, but <clears throat> like so I'm saying like their their low standard is still better than most other superhero properties. Yeah, yeah. And I know people like, you know, you shouldn't you shouldn't have to compare it. They should kind of stand on their own. And I'm like, yeah, but even on on their own they're actually worse cuz they're not good films then. Right. Like if we are, you know, judging it based on a standard that's already been set, then it's it looks a little okay, I guess. But it, it, I don't know. I think it's just impossible not to compare to the same genre. Like, they're superhero movies. You compare them. Right. Right now, just there isn't a lot of other properties out that are currently making movies other than DC and Marvel. Like. Mm-hmm. If we got a Spawn movie, we'd be comparing it alongside just the same. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, if they come out with a Wildcats movie, we're going to be talking about it just the same. So I don't I don't understand. We, we have to compare them because they're the only shits out right now. Yep. Um, when Valiant strikes its deal, I'm sure we'll be talking about those as well. When that happens. But I think Doctor Strange was a great entry. And I'm excited for everything that's going to come next. It was uh, I was a little bit sad to see Scott Atkins in this movie as a throwaway villain. Right, because I'm like, no, you no could have been somebody else. <laughs> yeah, everybody wanted him to be Wolverine. Now he's just some dude Doctor Strange beat up. Mm-hmm. Well, Doctor Strange's cape beat up. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of that, right. what did you think of the, the, the humor? Because I remember before we'd seen oh, it, right. that was that's one right. of the elements right. we were concerned um, about. I think for the most part, like, it's not the stuff that, I mean, obviously, it's been, a, it's, it's, I've had time now 
to let the film mm-hmm. settle and it the things that annoyed me like the things that probably would have annoyed me instantly didn't kind of sink into the point where they're lasting nuisance right they don't they wouldn't they weren't big enough to be still bothering you right so i can remember some of the humor and it's it's whatever some of them i did laugh at but some of them I was like yeah i don't even know if i was needed yeah, I, the only one I remember being concerned about from the trailer, I guess the only two things, was I guess the moment where he's doing the 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 symbols with his hands and one flickers out. Yep, that didn't bother me. With 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 context, that was fine though. Yep. Just in the trailer, when that comedy trailer, quote unquote, right, right. it was hard to tell how the fuck that was gonna fit in. It just seemed like slapstick. Mm-hmm. And the fucking the cape like kissing on him in the commercial is like it likes you. Yep. That was bizarre to me. Right. In context, which I don't even think that me. reaction is. I don't even think that reaction of, oh, it likes you. I don't even think that's in the movie. Nah. Um, But in the movie, it worked out fine. It was like the cape drying his tears. And also, yeah. it works better in the movie because you see that the cape is more like the carpet from Aladdin. That's why. And it's awesome. Right. And if I can't get the magic carpet from Aladdin, I just want the cape. <laughs> If you could have one or the other, you would pick the carpet? Probably. I'd Although, pick the cape, man. Probably the cape, because I could just wear it around. Exactly, yeah, exactly. the carpet, I mean, I'd have to ride it all the time. <laughs> you know? With the cape, it's With like, With the cape, uh, you at least look like you're flying. Right, right. And plus, it's a cape. Instead man. of just riding a thing. And if I'm going to have any reason to wear a cape, it's bloody the best reason ever. Yeah, plus it's that it's got that gangster like built in. It's only over one shoulder at all yeah, times. Yeah, that's thug, dude. <laughs> <laughs> ah, such thug for dope. His outfit was dope, dude. The costuming in this film was sick. Yeah, they did a good job adapting, mm-hmm. uh, adapting the look in the books. And the minus humor, the yeah. yellow gloves, and they even gave us those at the end. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah the humor, uh, nothing, nothing uh, that probably made me go, huh? in the film lasts enough for me to be like, yeah, that was, it's still shit and it's shit. And the film is lesser because of it. Yeah. I, one of the ones I really did like was that first scene where we get to see him wearing the Cape. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a scene where he's like trying to grab an ax off the wall yeah, and the and cape it wasn't letting like him. <laughs> pulling him towards a different thing. Right. Right. I thought it was funny. And so eventually he tries it, and I, I actually liked what it looked like when he threw that thing on him, and it was pulling him into all those poses before it, like, set him up to be trapped in it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the, yeah like, I do. It was great. shackles thing. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was a cool-looking effect, one, and the the device concept was interesting to me. I still don't know how he got out of it. Yeah, uh, the shackles thing was legit, dude. What the heck? Yeah, I don't know what the fuck those were for. It looked cool, man. <laughs> but yeah, the it cape looked had cool. seen it looked cool. Um, but yeah, man, every, everything they set up pretty much, I'm down for. Even the Chilatel, Iji for Mordo shit at the very, very end. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and even that, is, even his Sin- Sinestro moment, I'm like, yeah, I'm it, on though. board. Yeah, because I get it. I get why. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not just like he was just all of a sudden. I'm a bad. I I don't. I don't like you guys. It, you can see it in the film. Him right, and I that. think. He already had said before in the movie that he had that darkness. That's why he was learning from the Ancient One. Mm-hmm. And then to find out the person who was teaching him to stay away from the darkness and to control was already it. Was using it. Was using yeah. the literal dark energy mm-hmm. that he was like, all right, well, fuck it. She just destroyed everything that I've built this new life on. Mm-hmm. And matter. so now, now I'm getting rid of all of it. Now I hate all of it. Uh, to me i get that more than i more than i even got the sinestro thing but that i feel like they didn't even really set that up they're just like hey you found the yellow shit at the end he's a bad guy now (laughs) all right um in terms of uh in terms of um marvel solo films marvel Mm -hmm. yeah solo character films how does this one rank i think it definitely was one of the strongest one so far. Yeah. But, it's up there. Uh, to me, I just don't know if you can if you can push Doctor Strange out of the way that easily. Or not Doctor Strange, but uh, Iron Man out of the way that easily. Right, right, right. That first 
one without that first one it's just so pivotal and it works mm-hmm. so perfectly mm-hmm. that i just don't know if you can outdo that but doctor strange was very good i just don't know if it works as well on its own completely away from the rest of the universe i think it's probably out of first all the, uh, solo ones it might be the closest to it right and i can understand Although, like, yeah, first avenger dude first I avenger does yeah, get enough I, credit i love that one I love that one so much. I know people don't like it as much, but I don't know. I don't know. I think that one was... if Honestly, if that was the first Marvel film that they released, it mm-hmm. would still make sense to me. Right. And I think it, and it could have been yeah. with how they set everything up. It literally could have Absolutely. been. Like, if you honestly watch, say, the films in chronological order, mm-hmm. and that one was the first one you watch, everything would still land in its place. Right. So... Um, yeah, I just, I think, I think it's up there, but I wouldn't push it out of the place maybe of those two, but you already know the one I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for the first Spider-Man outing yeah, yeah, yeah. to judge next who's year, the next best. Year. That Let's see gonna that. Be my shit. I've already had uh, a couple different people message me about staying creamy. I need to watch that or listen to that episode yeah, again to see what the stuff <laughs> about. A, well, I mean, we, we're still staying creamy, so... <laughs> <laughs> too creamy for Doctor Strange. Oh, it's just for Marvel. Yeah. At this point. Um. But yeah, uh, I think that pretty much covers it. All that that's was... all that shit was in there. We liked it. Love I get it. how many out of out of out of ten Marvels. How many Marvels do you give it? I actually give this one like maybe a nine, nine and a half Marvels. A nine and a half more. It's very high for me. It's very very. Uh, high. Uh, I give it a nine marvels. I give it a nine, yeah. I can't give it the half just because I think that Dormammu could have been cooler visually. But all right, visually than be just cooler? ahead. I think the what way... they gave us was cool, but I just want to see. I want to see the like a humanized form right, of right, that, right. and we might, we might. We might, but I, I, you know what I think is, I think they were, I think that they were trying to give us a Dormammu that they could use in place of Galactus. Yeah. They even made him purple. Yeah. And the dude ain't purple normally. Yep. I just feel, yeah. I mean, he's got purple on his outfit or whatever, but still, I feel like they cool. would give they, the giant head, and I think they called him. The consumer of worlds, or the destroyer of yep. worlds, or something. One of the two, and I was like, "That's definitely a Galactus reference." They don't need any more, man. If you got Dormammu as powerful, because he's technically he's super powerful, anyways. He is, and it was he was talking to a giant purple head, which yes. I feel like that could easily Have they could give planet. him a body right. along with the head, and yep. he's Galactus. Yep, he's yep. a huge figure. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't put it past him. No, I wouldn't put it past. Him, not no. at all. What we got of him, I did yeah. like though. I'm not, I'm not fussed. I'm not fussed with how he looked. No, I didn't dislike what we got. I just think I want to see a human. I want well, not a human form, but I want to see a body. Get, give, give it time. I don't give it time. A disembodied Zordon head with. Give it time. Like Venetian blinds going across it the whole time. Yeah. I'd say give it time, man. Right, but you know you gotta go off what they gave us. If that was the only time we see Dormammu, would that be enough? And for me, it is because I'm not all that attached to Doctor Strange. Right, right, but I right. feel like if he's gonna be a bigger thing, I wish we could have seen. Sure, sure. Something. And but, maybe yeah. that's why we didn't. They didn't give us that because they knew that he's gonna eventually rock back up. Right. We gotta have something for him to do later. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's our little. Discussion about Doctor Strange. Finally, uh, let us know your thoughts, people. Yeah, Just what stuff did you like or dislike or notice yeah. was weird? And tell us about that in the comments. And maybe, and, maybe uh, we'll read some of the comments and go, yeah, we agree. Or, no, I see where you're coming from, but I don't agree. What? You yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's not um, creepy at all. <laughs> not even a little. That's not the driest little, comment man. I've ever heard. That's very... Um, but this, I guess, this will be our only episode until you get back. How long are you gone again? A week? Uh, just a week. Just a week. We can basically record oh. like uh, next weekend. Okay. So, uh, yeah, by the time, yeah, 
in a week, I'm sure there'll be new news that pops up and stuff, so we'll have that ready. Right, right, right. Right, right. So, yeah. Sorry about, again, the uh, skipped episode last week, but, uh, you know, you're getting this. <laughs> and this is definitely something. This is definitely something. So, I don't know if we'll have a video, back, though. Uh, oh, are we not doing a video? I mean, unless you want to do one. Uh, I just can't right now. It's gonna, See, I'll take I can't, because I'll be overseas, Still waiting so. for it. Uh, you could, yeah. have, you, you've drawn Doctor Strange though, haven't you? I have the Cumberbatch one from a while ago. Boom! Can, Nailed it. Covered. Yeah, but I, I'm not. I can't. I can't compile the video and stuff. It'll oh, take no, me a while. You, can, video, you, you know what to do. You've done it before. Yeah, you just have to give me that picture. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. I'll have to look for it. Uh, but any shits. Okay. Until next time, guys. Stay chipper, creamy chaps. <laughs> Stay creamy, chipper chaps. <laughs> what up, chipper chap? This is chipper chap chap. What up, chipper chap? This is chipper chap chap. What up, chipper chap? This is chipper chap chap. What up, chipper chap? This is chipper chap chap.